Welcome back. You're now moving on to goal three. Remember goal one was checking in on times tables. Goal two was defining fractions. We're now going to talk about equivalent fractions. The important thing about equivalent fractions is that they represent the same thing. So in example four, which you should have in front of you, which says write four equivalent fractions for two thirds, then two thirds is actually the same as four sixths. I can show you that down here, and I'm going to rub it off in a moment, but if you have a rectangle cut into three pieces, and two of those pieces are shaded, two thirds of that rectangle is shaded. If we now make our rectangle cut into six pieces, you can see that I've got four pieces, but each piece, uh, or the amount of shaded, is still exactly the same. So two thirds and four sixths are the same. But we can do that without drawing diagrams by recognising that as long as you do the same operation, in this case multiplying by 2, and the only operations you can do are multiply or divide, as long as you do the same operation to the numerator and denominator, your fraction stays the same. So 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 2 thirds is the same as Four sixths. We've got to find four, so let's try another number. Well, let's try both multiplying by three. What is two times three? It is six. What is three times three? It is nine. So six ninths is the same as two thirds. What about if I multiply by four? Two times four is eight. Three times four is twelve. So eight twelfths is the same as two-thirds. What if I multiply by seven? Seven times two is fourteen. Seven times three is twenty-one. Maybe you're getting a little bit of an idea that you do need to be able to just know your tables. So that's worked example four. In your next example, in the uh, sheet that you should have in front of you, you are asked to insert either an equal sign or a is not equal sign between each pair of fractions. So the question we ask is one third the same as three sevenths. Now you might be able to look at that and say, no, but what about this one? Is four fifths the same as 20 over 25? To make absolutely certain that something is equal or not equal, you need to work with the lowest common multiple. Back to work we did in term one. What is the lowest common multiple of 3 and 7? The answer is 21. So what you need to do is to change both of your fractions to 21sts. And so you have to ask yourself a question. What did I multiply by? Well, 3 has to be multiplied by 7 to give 21. Got to do the same thing to the numerator. So 1 times 7 is 7. Moving over now to 3 sevenths. What has 7 been multiplied by to give 21? The answer is 3 this time. So what do I do to the 3? I multiply it also by 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. And that tells me that 9 over 21 and 7 over 21 are not the same, so back up here I can put is not equal to. Moving on to 4 fifths and 20 over 25, then the lowest common multiple of 5 and 25, 5 is in fact a factor of 25, so we can actually change both of those now to 25ths, the lowest common multiple of uh, 5 and 25 is 25, which is great because we don't need to change the first one. That just stays as 20, as 20 over 25. But what 
about this one here? Five times what? What's the missing number? Answer, five. So what do I do to the four? I multiply by five. Now look at what's happened here. You have 20 over 25, 20 over 25. They are in fact the same, so four fifths is the same as 20 over 25. So we can get equivalent fractions by multiplying. We can also get equivalent fractions by dividing. And this is called writing in the simplest form. If you see that instruction, write in the simplest form, same sort of problem that Wally and Molly did, you have to find the highest common factor of 12 and 30. So again, you see, term one work, you need to remember your factor work. And divide. In this case, the highest common factor of 12 and 20 is 4. So we now are going to divide by 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 12 twentieths in its simplest form is 3 over 5. Moving on to the next one, given the work we've already done, you should be able to see that really the only factors of 7 are 1 and 7, so all we have to do is check will 7 divide evenly into 42, and the answer is of course yes. How many 7s in 42? 6. How many 7s in 7? 1. So there is 7 40 seconds in its simplest form, one-sixth. One final word about this one. You might initially have looked at that and said, okay, two is a common factor. So you might have divided by two. And that would have given you 12 divided by two is six, and 20 divided by two is 10. That's not wrong. But you haven't completed the instruction because 6 and 10 still have a common factor of 2. So if you had done that, you would then have to do 6 divided by 2 is 3, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and there we have the same answer that you would have got divided by dividing by 4. Again, as you can see, put in your tables, see that 4 is a common factor, saves you time. Uh, just some final instructions about the week. You'll notice that goal four is an assignment. You need to check with your instructions from uh, Mr. Popel, I believe, about how to submit that assignment. Each week, you should work through the tasks in the order I give them to you. So for this week, task one, two, and three done first. Then you do your assignment, and that gets submitted to me by the end of the week. Some of you will actually finish the work really quickly and uh, for you people there is some extension work there. So you'll note that there is a goal five and a goal six. That's optional. If you want to do more, uh, please feel free to do it. But for those of you who are interested in just making sure you cover what I need you to cover, then goals one, two, three and four are all you need to worry about. And finally, again, don't forget your instructions about your work. Mark after each one, watch your setting out, and please let me know if you're struggling. All the best. Bye.